right. Uh, the handle is also black, uh, but the top, top part of the handle is catching the light, so it will ultimately be lighter, even though initially I'm going to just paint it in as a, as a similar colour or tone. Now the light source is important when you're painting. The light source in this instance is coming very much from the left of me, which is, you know, an ideal situation. Um, and it's catching the forms in different places. And it's important that you do consider that because these cast shadows are all to the right of the objects because the light is coming in from the left. Uh, and when somebody looks at that, it's sort of, it's convincing because uh, that has been taken into consideration. If you don't consider the light source, you can end up with something that just looks a bit um, mechanical uh, and not well considered. Um, now, everything's metal here. This is metal. Um, the only thing that isn't is the handle, which is wood. So. I cannot paint that at the moment because of the wetness of the saucepan. Um, but I could probably pop these little cast shadows in, which I haven't done. So I'm going to do that next. Some more cast shadows from the actual masher. And also from the label. And again, I'm just softening the edge with water as I take it up to the shape. Now, while I'm waiting for this all to dry, I can probably go back to here. This is nearly dry and drop some screw. When you just get it just right, it'll fuse uh, exactly as you want it to. But you have to get that magic moment when it's not too wet and it's not too dry. Um, along the top here it's also a bit that's already going a bit dry you can see that so i can go back with just water and soften it back at the end so it doesn't create a tide line or a hard edge i think that's really quite important this little fellow down here is a little bit on the wet side let's, let's let it dry a bit more um, I'm going to put a bit of dark down here. And already you can see that the relationship of that, this is just slightly darker, warmer grey than what I'm going to use on this label behind. I'm going to make this slightly bluer so that it actually sits back behind the potato masher. Uh, is this dry enough to work on? Not quite. Um, so let's go back to the ladle here and I'm using that original strong grey blue for the just to make some of this a little bit darker than, than it actually is at the moment because it's a little bit pale. Um, I'm going to leave that little light edge there. Paper towel is enormously useful for um, lifting out if you need to lift out or blotting, drying your brushes. I mean, it has multiple uses and it's you know, very handy when you're doing watercolour painting. So I always have plenty of it at hand. Right, okay, so that's bluey colours going in behind this one. This, is, this one's got the light on it. Quite dark down the bottom here where the light isn't getting at the ladle and in between here. Right, so what we don't want is for the shapes to all merge in together. They've got to read off each other. Um, so that way, the way you do that is by using cooler colours for the shapes that are further back and warmer colours or warmer greys for the shapes and objects that are closer to me. Now I'm going to go back into the saucepan because I think that's 
more or less ready. And I'm going to put some of this strong, dark, bluey grey in here. I'm just going to drop it in. Again, I'm not pushing it around. I'm just literally letting the colour sort of float into the damp colour underneath. It's, it's fusing really nicely because this is damp, this um, area here. Um, at the moment I probably will use the same grey, but I will probably layer it up so that I build up the, the darks across the form. See, it's already beginning to act as a dark shape against the lighter shapes in front of them, in front of it. My car shadow isn't quite dry yet, so again, I'm just having to keep away from it for the moment. Bring it down, right down to the car shadow. Without losing the shape. This is the bit of the edge of it over here. Right. Now there's um, a bit of dark shadow on this handle here. So let's pop that in. And as I said, the handle itself is dark. So... I probably will put another layer of the stock grey over the top. Um, the way to achieve these stronger, darker colours is by layering them up. You can mix them directly, but um, you never get to the full strength of the dark colour that you will get when you layer them. So once one layer is dry, you can always pop another layer over the top and build these dark tones up. In this case, it's a dark handle, but the top of the handle is going to end up lighter than the bottom of the handle. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to just see if this is damp. No, it's dry. So I'm going to just put some water over the top of there and then fuse some colour in over the top. So they will mix a bit, and that's right for now. Um, and I just put a little bit more dark down the bottom here and then keep my board at an angle so it doesn't run back into the wet. Um, how, how you have your board is also important because um, you can control the flow of the colour by having it you know, either flatter or more um, at an angle depending on how you want to, what you're painting. To my grey down here and I'm going to just darken that a bit more and again soften it with my dry clean brush so it just merges into the other colour. And there's no edge or hard line where one colour joins another. Um, I'm going to put a bit of a dark edge on here. As I can see a dark edge running down the edge of the masher. I'm just using the tip of my brush so that I've got maximum control. And here around the top of the masher there is also a little strong dark line so I'll turn my board and bring that 
line round here. Let's define that better. Now there are some dark bits in here which I can see, so along the edge of the inside of the sections of the masher, it's dark. So I'm just going to drop some a little bit of dark in there for now. That may, may increase the darkness in due course. And paper, and it's just going in nicely. So I'll just do that a little bit for now. Um, the other thing are these, where the car shadows, which are a lovely to paint. Um, I'm just going to develop a little bit of that before I have a break. Um, but underneath here, the, there is a lovely dark shadow. So as well as the, the softer one that I've created out here, there's some dark bits where the light can't get to, right close up to the shape. And again, I'm using this technique of softening it out with my brush. As the car shadow moves away from you, it gets paler, so do bear that in mind. I'm just using water on this outside edge. And then I will go back and drop more darker colouring around you as it gets closer to the shape. Um, similarly here, if it's closer to the shape, you can actually increase the the colour a bit of the, of the car shadow. This painting next week, but that is how to proceed uh, with the initial washes and tones across the subject.